This is the coldest, driest, and windiest place on Earth. Its habitat is perfect for penguins, seals, and whales. But for humans, it is one of the most inhospitable places we know of. Welcome to Antarctica, where two of the biggest crises of our time meet, climate change and the loss of biodiversity. But instead of getting into how we are destroying the planet, you probably know that already, let's see what Antarctica is doing for us. If it wasn't for Antarctica, life would certainly be very different. The Southern Ocean, which surrounds Antarctica, is slowing down the pace of climate change. It absorbs as much as 75% of the global excess heat and captures 35% of the CO2 taken up by the world's oceans. The Southern Ocean actually connects all of the world's ocean basins. And there are these cold, deep currents that come from Antarctica and go around the entire world and bring their cooling waters to regulate temperatures. And those same waters also carry nutrients that go far beyond the equator that feed fish, that feed people around the world. But swallowing all that CO2 and heat comes with a price. Antarctica has warmed up by about 1.8 degrees Celsius between 1989 and 2018. That's three times the global average. In 2020, it recorded a new record temperature, 18.3 degrees Celsius. The world is warming, the poles are warming faster, and the ocean, which has so far buffered humanity from the full extent of climate change, is experiencing ocean acidification, warming, deoxygenation, and marine heat waves. Antarctica and the Southern Ocean contain 90% of the world's ice and 70% of the planet's freshwater. This white continent hides species we haven't even discovered yet. And the ones we do know of are vital to marine life. This tiny creature is called Antarctic krill. Small as it may seem, it holds the entire ecosystem together. But krill fishing is a lucrative and booming industry. Catches have almost tripled since the 1980s. Industrial-scale fishing and warming water is impacting the krill population, which in turn could harm the ocean's food chain. They're having to go increasingly more to the south because the waters are warming. Without krill, we won't have the vibrant, incredible life that we're used to seeing in Antarctica. All of this makes Antarctica one of the most critical natural laboratories on the planet. It's the place to be for scientists from all over the world. Thousands of them come here every year to conduct studies on space, the Earth system, and most importantly, climate. The more climate research that is done, the more it demonstrates how quickly we need to act. We're moving closer and closer to tipping points where there'll be no return. But how can we avoid reaching this point of no return? Reducing fishing pressures and pollution are very, very important. But even more important are creating marine protected areas where no fishing is allowed at all. Marine protected areas, MPAs for short, are like imaginary fences that keep what's inside safe. They are becoming more and more popular all over the world because they can help marine species recover, especially those that have been heavily exploited by fishing. MPAs can also help the ocean be more resilient to environmental changes and recover more rapidly. Some studies even say they can benefit fishermen. There's a huge spillover effect in a marine protected area, so there's more fish beyond the border of the marine protected area than there is uh, normally. So. These MPAs will actually even help the fishermen. Currently, there are only two marine protected areas in the Southern Ocean, one in the Ross Sea and the other in the Southern Orkney Islands Southern Shelf. 
the international target was to protect at least 10% of the world's ocean by 2020, but we failed to achieve it. Currently, only 7.72% of the world's ocean is covered by marine protected areas. But this might change soon. The European Union, together with the Commission for the Conservation of Antarctic Marine Living Resources, has proposed to create two new large-scale marine protected areas in the Southern Ocean, one in East Antarctica and another in the Weddell Sea. There is also a third proposal from Argentina and Chile to create a marine protected area in the Antarctic Peninsula. Together, the three proposals would protect as much as 1% of the world's ocean. But so far, the decision has been blocked by China and Russia over concerns that this might affect fisheries. Designating maritime protected areas in the Antarctica would be one of the biggest acts of environmental protection in history. Marine protected areas can help Antarctica recover, but unfortunately, they are not enough to save it. We also need to cut greenhouse gas emissions, reduce pollution, and fight illegal fishing. For this, strong international cooperation and regulations are needed, and the world needs to respect ambitious targets such as protecting at least 30% of the world's oceans by 2030. This could save many species, including our own.